Hi guys, it's Jilly Hunt here with my A to Z guide to stamping up products. And we're up to the letter O for organise. And you'll notice that I'm not on my usual background here because actually today we're going to do something different. I'm going to take you on a craft room tour of my working space. So I'm hoping that that will give you inspiration and ideas to use. I understand that I'm very lucky having a big space. I've crafted in the past before now with boxes under beds, things on top of wardrobes, piles in the corner. And I know how difficult that can be, but hopefully some of the things I do might be helpful to you and might give you some a few ideas. Um, and I also know that I've got a lot to learn from lots of other people who organise their things quite differently. And we all organise things according to how we craft. So here goes. Let's take you on a slightly bumpy, slightly out of focus ride. I'm hoping to try and keep the focus, but it may have to keep being changed. And I'm hoping to be able to keep it a little less than bumpy for you. So first of all, I'm going to show you this side of my room where I have my racks and I have been lucky enough to find on eBay some great bargains. I got these for very, very few pennies. They're slightly rusty, but I call them shabby chic um, and they were being thrown out by a craft um, shop that had got some extra nice snazzy new ones. But for me, they do the job and they're wonderful. And it made me decide how to organise my crafting things because there are 30 spaces on each of the racks. So I decided very simply to put the 10 brights on the right hand side from the top, the 10 brights, then the 10 subtles, then the 10 regals, which gives me the 30 rack, which is perfect. On the next rack along, the middle one, I have from the bottom this time, I have my 10 neutrals, then I have my five in colours, and there are in fact five spaces ready for the new in colours coming in. Um, I always um, record my YouTubes a little ahead of time, so I hadn't yet got my new June deliveries. I'm hoping by the time I release this that I will have them. So the other thing I have at the top of this is I have then my um, various foils, glimmers, shimmers and watercolours etc. I'm sure you can see those for yourself. But more importantly at the very top I also have little tiny scraps because then I, I have little pencil cases with different shapes and sizes of scraps from long thin ones. Um, which are just the cuttings off the edges when I'm making it slightly shorter, um, to little tiny ones that can be used for labels and things like that. So those are at the top in what is a little acrylic container. These acrylics that I've got on the tops of the racks, there's three of them, one, two and three, um, I got from a stationery shop. They're the sort that you normally stack one on top of the other, but they fit perfectly on my racks, so they're great and very useful. Very useful for this reason, because look what I have in here. I am a real busy crafter and I love, I'm one of these people that when I'm on the go and my ideas are flowing, I don't want to be stopping and starting and thinking all over again. Um, so I don't want to necessarily put things away. I just want to bung them on the side. And so that's what these are for. These are my returns. So any um, card that I've been using recently goes in here until I can be bothered to put it away. And also the same goes with the papers on this side. So this is my paper return and this is my card return. And it just helps keep me organised because otherwise I tend to just sort of chuck them in and I don't put them away and I don't pop them. I don't sort them into sizes and things like that. So why, what do I mean by sorting into sizes? So let's just go down and grab something. Let's try the purple posy. Let's just come across the table so I can put them down and show you. Um, what I do on each of the racks, I put my 12 by 12s at the bottom. Then I put the A4s and then I put any one that's sort of long or that's a larger scrap 
on top of that and then on the very top of that I have an A5 folder which I put my small pieces in. So these are the little bits that are trimmings off things. And that way, by putting them that order, I make sure that I use up my scraps and my smaller pieces first. So 12 by 12s, A4, large scraps, and then once they're less than an A5 size, they go into this little folder. And I put the little label on with the right colour label, which means that when I take these to my craft classes for my uh, teaching, um, everybody knows what colour it is and there's no problems with putting things away. Okay, so let's just, ooh, sorry, I t told you I might give you a few giddy moments, sorry. Um, here we go, I'm on to the next rack, and the next rack has a whole load of spaces, actually, um, and that's waiting for the next lot of designer series paper. As I say, I'm recording this just before the June catalogue comes out, and I haven't got my delivery yet of those. But when it does arrive, each of those racks will have one little set so each set will have its own shelf and that will be fabulous and easy to find. And then I have um, in packets the in colours that have gone out of the catalogue. So this one goes out this time. So blueberry bushel, call me clover and all of those will no longer be available. So they go into a little packet like this for me to use up or to keep to one side for future projects. Underneath that, I then have all my older papers. So I'm just going to show you so that I can flick the corner. I can see, oops, let's just, I can see very quickly. I've just labelled the corner so that as I flick through, I can see what they all are. I can flick through and, oh, there's the one I want. It's Bonanza. Okay, so that's how those work. What I do though is, let me get one out and I'll bring this across the table to show you. Okay, here we go. Um, what I do is I label it in the corner so I can do that flick through the corners. Um, and then I put all the pieces in for one set. I write the name of the set. I also put when that catalogue was active. So autumn, winter 2018. And I put the colours so I know exactly which they are. So I'm not debating is that emerald envy? Is it gr garden green? Is it whatever? I will know because I've written down the colours. There we go. In the old days, I used to just cut off the little um, piece on the packet. On the packet, there's a little tiny writing with all that on. But to be honest, my eyesight's not that good anymore. <laughs> and so when I'm trying to squint at it, I find it just easier to copy it and put my own mark on it. So there we go. Let's put that back on the rack and keep tidy as we're being organised today. <laughs> So that, that's how I work with those. And those packets that I had, um, here we go, this is one. These, these polythene packets, if you're wondering what these are, they're actually the covers that you can buy for albums, uh, vinyl uh, record albums. Um, and these are the vinyl record album covers. You can buy them in packs of sort of 100 for very few pennies. And they are absolutely great because they are perfect for 12 by 12s. Okay, working around my room, I'm just going to take you for a quick... Here we go. Um, here's where I have my um, cutting and embossing uh, station. So this is where I keep my die cuts, my big shot and all my dies and embossing folders. And they're on these metal shelves, uh, metal drawers which I got from Ikea, they're great. Um, and if I just pull it out so I can move it, these are all on um, casters, so really easy to move, easy as could be, can do it with one hand, and it means then I can have them right up next to my table here, which is where I have them when I'm working on my own, but it also means I can move them away and have them in a different corner, or out in a different room even. Um, when I want to have people round and I want to have a chair up against the table. So I have enough room here to have a good four to six people sitting along the benches and along the seats here and I can put an extra seat in at that side too. Which is fabulous, which is great. I love it, I love it. There's nothing nicer than crafting with mates. So how do I organise my um, 
folders here. Um, I normally, by the end of the season, have two boxes, but I've cleared away last season's stock, and this is just the new season stock. Um, and what I'll do is normally have one for dyes and one for embossing, but until then, I've just got the one. So at the front, let me show you. Um, sometimes I get a new pack and I don't want to open it straight away for whatever reason. Um, sometimes I win them in raffles and I don't want to um, necessarily open it um, in case I want to sell it later on or pass it on as a nice present or gift to someone. And of course they don't want it to be used. So I put them in here and on the front I put the name of the set and the number of pieces. So it's 18 pieces, 18 little die cuts. And on the back I do a photocopy of from the catalogue page just so that I've got that and I know what that set is. So that's what I do and I put that away until I'm ready to use it. And then when I'm ready to use it, so let's look at one that's been used. Here we go. I'll just have a look at this little set here. So this is Christmas layers and there's my number. So it's seven pieces and I've written three large and four small because there's three really big pieces and then lots of little ones. So then we know whether we're looking for a little one or a big one if we've got one missing. I'll also put notes and I sometimes put notes on the back to tell me um, something about this set. So this one says lots of great negatives because actually if you look there's some lovely diamond shapes which are cut out when you cut out the die cut so it's reminding me to look out for those little pieces because they're sometimes worth keeping. Now behind this I then have the set itself and at the back of the set I put in a little bag. Now you don't need this if you're not a demonstrator because you're going to be keeping them nicely in your box but because I take mine and, and put them in my craft bag and I carry them and I tip them in and out of the car and I'm not all that careful um, sometimes the little ones can just wiggle their way out of the packets so I tend to put mine in a double wrap so I put them in a little seal bag which means that I know excuse me wobbling you about I know that those then are nice and safe and secure and then I also have some of these little packets and w once again they're little um, fold plastic folders with a little popper um, and I like these these are quarter A4 size which I can't remember what that is is that a Ooh, I don't know I think it might be an A a6 but it's qu the quarter size of, and it fits in beautifully with with those look it fits perfectly with those and this way I can store away any little pieces that I've already cut out let me show you um, so for example um, quite often I do this if I'm showing you oops sorry I'm bobbing you about um, I've used I've cut out some of this lovely um, delicate piece and I've got some bits left so I've cut off and used the other bits and I have a little piece left there but it's a nice enough little piece that I might want to use that behind something so I can pop it in there along with some of the snowdrops, snowflakes and things and it's ready the next time I need this set I can double check to see if I've already got one cut out and ready to go so that goes back in there and each of those is just nicely lined up in alphabetical order and easy to find. So you can just run your fingers right through and catch them, can't you? Um, now, the other thing that I also do, and I'll just show you, I think this is one that has it. Yes, it does. Um, Wild Rose is one of the ones where there is a stamp set that matches. So if there's a stamp set that matches my die cuts, I write stamp set and to a wild rose so I know which stamp set to go and have a look to. I've also done that on the packaging here. So when I'm picking it up, I know that to a wild rose will go with this set. And what I've done is when I've been doing my initial cut out and stick on, I've actually done the stamping and then cut them out. It just helps me know how that works. So. That's another nice, easy thing that you can do. 
So let me put that away. Ooh, I'm sorry, I'm bouncing you around again. <laughs> it's quite hard because I'm holding the camera with one hand and, and talking and moving and picking things out at the same time. So this is the back end of this um, where I have all my um, embossing folders. So here we go. What I do is exactly the same. These um, pieces of card are actually um, index cards for, you know, you get, I think it's Rexel boxes that have the index cards for stationery. So I just use that. Um, then they're ready cut, but you could cut your own if you wanted to. Um, these then I just emboss and that becomes my sample. There's my embossing folder. And here's something that I do because I teach classes. Um, sometimes classes, they're wonderful, my ladies. Many of them are brand new beginners and they're learning the, the ropes. And of course, with it being a month between classes, I run monthly classes, um, sometimes they forget what I've told them about how to pop this into the machine. So I always, on the corner here, on the hinge, I write the, the name of the thing and I put the arrow. So they know they've got to be able to read that and push it in that direction through the machine then they're not going to break my hinges so there we go that goes in oh, let me pick it up and that goes in at the back and i'm wishing you around again i'm very sorry let me just put my finger over it so you don't feel too sick okay then i have my next part of my um my craft room is my um old but good wall i call this my little old but good wall which has all the lovely old things that are old stock so i know these are wonderful things i certainly don't want to get rid of them and i'm going to use them for my own use um, when i make my own personal cards but as a demonstrator i don't want to be using these because they're now no longer in the catalogue but just a, a little hint for you as to an idea for uh, putting away your ribbons um, these are put on, let me show you, oh and do you know what I didn't show you these little samples, let me just go backwards a little bit. Um, these little samples are how I put my um, card stock and my papers um, to one side, let me just show you. So I have, oh, put it, hold on, let me take it off. Whee! Sorry. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. So here are my sample sh sheets, which I should have shown you when I was talking about the cards and papers. So when I do my papers, I divide them into little one inch squares and I stick them on a sample sheet like that with the name of the set at the top and the details on the back to tell you what's autumn, winter and what colours there are. I do that for all of them, which allows me to, instead of going through, let me show you again, instead of going through all those racks and trying to work out which ones are where and what, I know they're in alphabetical order and I also have my swatches in alphabetical order, hence all is bright, it's on the top for A, and at the back we've got Winter Wonderland I think, on oh, no, a whole lot of lovely and one or two others. Um, so I know then that they're in alphabetical order, the same as on the racks, and I can flick these over when I'm working out which ones I want to use. Really easy, simple way. Um, now I've started doing something else. I'll show you those as well. So come back across here again. Oh, you are going to feel very sick by the end of this. I do hope I'm not really genuinely making you feel sick. Um, so on the shelf here, I have the... A punch which punches out my one inch so I can do it very quickly and also I have a box with my more recent samples and I'm playing now with the idea of doing my samples as cards rather than doing them just as the sample sheet whether to do them as cards um, because I'm now demonstrating and doing events such as uh, Women's Institute talks and in fact, if you want me to come and do a talk for you or your club, I would love to. Do get in touch with me. Um, but if you 
if I do go to those, um, I can then take these and I can show people, but I, they also look very nicely displayed because they stand up like a proper, um, like a proper card and I, they look attractive. So I've sort of um, doing two things at the moment, but that's the simplest way if you want to just do it for yourself. This is an idea if you are a demonstrator and you want to use samples in a way that you can display. Okay, so sorry, that was a detour. Let's go back to the ribbon. So let's put that my finger over there so we don't all get giddy. And here we go, we're going back to the ribbons. So just to show you the ribbons, I thought I'd show you how it works. Um, you know the little hooks that you put your spoons and your things, like your sieve and things in the kitchen? These are these S-bend ones. And I've just hooked it into the top of what is the normal little... Um, hold that comes under a normal bracket on a DIY store type um, shelving unit. So all you do is you hook the little S bend in at one end, then you hook it into the end of your curtain rail. And this is one of those expandable curtain rails. So it goes all the way along here. And we have another S bend. So it's probably easier to see on this side. So there's my S going all the way around here and up and it goes into here so it hooks on nicely I don't have to tie anything and this goes to here and because this is one of those expandable curtain rails which opens up from the center it means that I can actually um, take the, the rolls off really easily nothing's tied nothing to unscrew I just take pop them out and, and take them off so those are my ribbons and underneath you'll see that I've got a whole series of little plastic containers uh, like this one. Let's just take one out and show you. So these are, are put underneath in roughly the same place as the colours above. So there's all my reds and pinks which go with the reds and pinks. And this was, what did I pick out? Oh, I picked out the greens. So here we go. And all I do is roll them around my hand into little swatches and then I put a piece of um, just ordinary paper round and a piece of sellotape or ta ta tear tape and then I just scribble on them old olive lemon lime twist or whatever colour so that we know what they are and what they'll match with. So I hope that might be a nice little idea for you. Um, I'm going to come round again. I'm going to just spin you around. And now I'm going to bring you to what I call the cockpit, which is my my sort of crafting station. So this is when I'm crafting alone and I want to just sit and craft and not be disturbed. And I don't want to be hopping up and down like mad grabbing things. So I grab hold of my papers and whatever I want and then I come and sit here and within reach I have everything I need, absolutely everything. So I have a lovely big table which I've already shown you and will sit up to six or eight people if I pull it out uh, but it'll certainly sit up to six nice and easily. And then I have um, a trolley with all my bits and pieces like my paint I have things like glycerin and nail varnish remover specifically to do special effects with. I have different types of masking tapes and um, palette knives and uh, aqua painters and spritzers and really nice paint brushes. And I have my um, aqua, uh, aqua pencils. Um, and all of these are on little slip off, slip on. Let me just come back a bit so you can see it. They just unhook and hook back on. Um, I, they were available from Ikea a long while ago, but and they may still have them. But the lovely thing is it means I can unhook them. I can bring it across to my table. I can pop it down on my table and I've got a nice working pot of pencils right next to me to do some crayoning with. So let's pop that away. Um, and that has everything I need there. If I come up, I then have um, my stamparatus and my cleaning scr um, scrubs. So the things that I use quite frequently. I then have my um, lovely shelf of stamps. 
And above that I have currently got some nice little displayed cards. Um, but on that display cards shelf, which goes on and on and on for quite some time, goes on and on and on, um, I actually have enough room to have lots more stamps. So these are just the ones that are carrying forward at the moment. So I will have far more on the next shelf up. Now, first of all, I put a piece of washi tape on them, which tells me that that's this season's. So I know if I'm looking for something for this season, that's what I'm going to look for. Um, other seasons, I might have put a coloured one, a gold one or a blue one or a green one. So the same washi tape just um, um, lets me know which catalogue they're from. And then I put a little circle like that if I know that I bought this stamp set and I know that there is either a punch or a die cut to go with it or an embossing folder, but it's one that I don't have. So that's when I don't have it. And then I simply colour it in when I get it. So, for example, uh, Garden Shed doesn't have anything to accompany it. So there's no circles there. This one has a die cut. Or I think it might be a punch even. I think it's a punch. Um, but I don't have it, so it's got a, a gap. And then I colour it in. So let's say the free as a bird. I know there's a die set and I know I have it, so I've coloured it in. So that makes it nice and clear to me if there's something else I want to do. Now, above that, there is a little book. Here it is. And a little set of sheets. So I'll just show you these. We'll bring them round onto the desk. Um, so first of all, when I get new stamp sets, I simply take two photocopies, one to go in here and I just photocopy the little front piece and this that way I now have a little booklet of every single stamp set that I own. So I can go through this and I know what I've got and I know what images there are and it's great because I can go downstairs watch a film sit and scribble and make ideas and I know what I've got I know everything I've got but the other thing that I often need is text now there are great ways of doing this on a computer um, and there are special apps that you can get that will organize your text for you and your stamp sets for you but I use the computer all day every day for work and to be honest when I'm wanting to craft I want to have fun I don't want to be picking up a computer again. So this, all I do is I take the second sheet. I said I made two copies. So let's say I've taken two copies of this. One goes into here and the other gets chopped up into just, I get rid of the, the pictures. I just take the text and I put the text here with the name of the set. And that way I can get these sheets out and I can spread them out because sometimes even though the wording's what I want, it might not be the right size or it might be that I want more curly writing or straighter writing or a different style. And this is a great simple way of doing that. Um, and at the moment I haven't got them in a folder because I've just been sorting them out ready for the new catalogue. But usually I put them in a ring binder so I can flick through the pages somewhat easily. Okay, so that's how I sort out my stamps. I'm going to leave things. I'm going to be in an awful mess in this craft room at the moment. Okay, so on to the next part of my um, craft room. So that was my stamps up there. Um, now I'm going on to this side and I have all my markers and pens in these racks. Now these aren't stamping up racks because I have these for a long, long time before and I collected Copex markers as you can see and this is only a small portion of the markers I do have I have another set somewhere else in a, a special binder but these I keep on here and so I organize these in uh, colors to, to match up with my my Copic markers so I've got for example if I come from the bottom here I've got all my greys then I have my neutrals then I have my um, which do I have? I have my blues. So these are my sort of more pure blues. Then I have my bluey greens. Then I have my greeny blues. Then I have my green and then I have my yellowy green and then my yellow and so on. And that's the system that the Copic markers have. So that's why I do them like that. But you do them how you like. And I would suggest that you kept them in your 
same order in the same way as you keep your papers and your inks because that just makes it all very easy. Above that I've got my punches and again I put a little piece of washi tape on, here we are look just on the corner, just so I know which catalogue these are from in case they get mixed up with my others. I've got an awful lot of um, punches elsewhere in my room and sometimes they get mixed up because I'm using but at least I know that these are all the ones that are in the current catalogue. So that's how I do that. Um, coming across, I have washi tape hoops, and this is just one of them. I've got several around the room in different places. Um, I almost use them as a kind of decoration. Um, but what they are is they're all embroidery hoops. Can you see the little screw at the top? Which allows me to use them, pick them up like this and just use them on the, on the hoop. Or it means I can unscrew them, take the one I want, screw it back together and that's fine. So those are, those are good fun way of, of keeping your washi tapes uh, amused and they're also quite pretty on the wall look. See in amongst all my, um, let's just see if I can get it into focus, in amongst my pictures and things I, I have a few of these and I have them scattered around the room different colours. So this one is my metallics and my pinky reds and my black and whites so I don't know what the yellow one's doing on there that needs to be moved <laughs> okay and underneath this I now have my carousel with all my inks next to my carousel with my inks I have my tote and my tote is something that I think is invaluable sadly stamping up don't do one I do hope one day they might they have done different kind of containers and I love this one which I have from stamping up which is my little small one um, which I keep at the back so I can just run away down the garden and, and craft and I have just a few supplies in there um, but this is my everything box this has one of pretty much everything a spritzer a, an aqua a snips, or in fact it has two pairs of snips, um, glues and tapes and dimensionals and heat sheets and oh it's like it's like Mary Poppins's cavernous cave it's got jewellery pliers and envelope makers and all kinds of things you could ever imagine so I would suggest if you can to get yourself some kind of a tote bag um, I also clip my heat gun to it with a peg. I just have a little peg that cl clips onto there. Um, that way it's plugged in all the time and it's ready to go, ready for action. Okay, um, now coming down underneath that, here's another little suggestion for you. Try and arrange your craft room with a few spare spaces. If you build everything in to perfection, the problem is then when you really want something by your side but you haven't built it in to the design, it's a problem. And I love these just little gaps I have between the drawers where I can slot in on the floor my trimmer and my scoreboard uh, because they're then really easy just to grab hold of. When I'm sitting in this chair, I can just grab them without thinking okay and I can also stock them away so they're not cluttering up my desk um, although I have my ribbons on the other side I also have a drawer of ribbons for my current ribbons and I just keep these in little um, containers like this so I can zzz them in and out um, and these are my current ribbons and then on the side here with it's got um, a magnetic strip on the back I've just made a little sampler so that I can put these up against my colours or against my card and I can just see what those ribbons are going to look like and I will fill this up with the new season's ribbons and I close it like this and there is my details on which ribbons they are, how much they cost, let me just see if I can focus it, Ooh, here we go, um, which ribbons they are, what colours they are what price they are and those sorts of things so I can I can use them and I know what I'm doing and that because it's got a metallic just a piece of met uh, magnetic tape on the back I can just bump that onto these metal units and it just sticks I also have my to-do list in the same way with, that has magnets on the back 
There's my to-do list. Oh, scary. Put it away. <laughs> it's a Sunday. It's not a to-do day. Okay, so I have all those things there. And then coming round, this is my desk. And I have my um, huge glass mat, which I absolutely love. Which I can't get in in one go, I don't think. Can I? Can I get it in in one go? Well, anyway, it's quite big, which gives me lots of space to work. It's also dead flat, so stamping works well. You really need a flat surface um, for stamping if you possibly can. Um, and then I have something which I, I kind of um, developed, <laughs> I hadn't realised, but I had my shelves up just away from the desk originally. And then I worked out that if I put the, the shelf in at the right height and my desk was right up next to it, I actually extend the desk along because these are flat now. This is straight across from the desk and across, which now means that I can have the things on my shelves, which are my blocks, my little teeny blocks, my daubers, my sponges, my cleaners, all my things. And they're all within my fingertip reach as if they were on my desk, but they're actually just off the desk, so it keeps them tidy. I also have my notebook and pads because I like to do a quick jot of notes because sometimes when I'm working, I start to make something and then I get an idea about something else. And before I forget that idea, I like to jot it down. So there we go. Um, I've got all sorts of bits and pieces in my little containers and then I have a shelf for my heat embossing which contains all my little um, stamping jars of, of embossing powders but it also has the powders in containers so that I can just grab a container ready to go there's a white there's the white ones ready to go and on top I just write up what, what they are great way of doing that okay so I think I have rushed my way around my craft room and I hope you haven't felt too giddy and too wobbly. I've tried like mad to hold still. Um, the last thing that people are always interested in is my how I film normally. So normally I have a static film and this is my tripod. So I want to show you how simple it is. It's actually an old film camera tripod which I had from a long time ago it's very wobbly it's not a it's not a particularly sturdy one and I have a huge big bulldog clip at the back there can you see oh here we go and that big bulldog clip there is what I clip my camera my iPhone camera to the upright with so I just literally bulldog clip my camera into place and these are lights from Ikea and because they are all the way around there's no gaps so they're all the way around and they're quite um, opaque it means that you get a diffused light so the only thing that I've changed is I've actually put a daylight bulb in each one <coughs> and three of those daylight bulbs is all I needed and that means I can pull this and I'm not going to do it because I'm just going to be in the way um, I just need to pull it across and it moves very easily and very quickly it's it's fairly simple to move I just pull the whole lot across over the top of my mat when I want to film and this glass mat flips over and there is my jelly hunt surface that I normally film on on the back so I flick the mat over Pull the, pull the tripod over the top and away I go. So that's how I do it. And before I finish, I just want to show you something that I think is really important. <laughs> because we all need to start somewhere with organising. And I have to say that Stamping Up have probably done my job for me. Because if you go to page 145 in the catalogue, you will find the most stunning organizational trays and containers and cubes they all clip together so you can change it round to suit you as you get more or less product you can add another layer and if you look carefully you can store your pens your inks your punches your ribbons pretty much everything so please 
think about it before you decide how you're going to organise your craft room and go on to page 145 and take a really good look because it's a great place to start. I hope somewhere in amongst all of my ramblings today you will have got some ideas um, and you may or may not like the way I've done it but I hope you've enjoyed my tour anyway and I look forward to seeing you for the next in the A to Z which will be P for punches. Thanks very much, bye bye.